Hello everyone and welcome back to ProRPA.com. Hope you guys are enjoying all the videos and uh, the blog posts that I have uh, put up so far. Uh, this week we are going to continue with the recordings and uh, I'm going to touch upon two of the major recording types. Um, one is called the manual recording and uh, the other one is going to be the web recording. Alright, so um, let's first talk about manual recording. In, you know, any recording that, you know, uh, we have talked about in our last week blog post, the basic and the desktop ones, right, um, there are a lot of options that, you know, um, that are like the activities which are supported by the UiPath, but not within the recording functionality. So you might have to manually add them. Either you can, you know, just add them to the workflow once the workflow has been created or you can directly add it through this recording controller which you get once you click on the recording option within the UiPath Studio. Right, so um, let's, let's you know, just take an example or um, first I want to walk you through, you know, like in um, some of these um, options that are available. Like say for click, you can select the item, you can check a checkbox and uh, you can uh, send a hotkey, hotkeys like, you know, sending the function keys F1, F2 or modifier keys like control alt and delete and all that stuff. So you can send those keys which are otherwise not sendable uh, when you are recording a session, right? You can also copy the text or scrape a text and there are some uh, mouse, uh, you know, options that you can do, keyboard options and um, you know, you can always copy the text and, uh, you know, through scraping, you have like other options which we're going to talk about. So um, let's take a very simple, very basic example, like the one that we took last time. If, let's say we are just writing, uh, we are emptying the field and we are writing rpa.com, uh, right? And uh, you know about the empty field because we did talk about it last week right and um, now um, what you want to do is you want to add a manual activity right you you want to use the manual recording thing so you just hit escape you don't save it yet because you still have some manual activities to do um, say you want to know what font uh, what is the font name that has been provided um, you know like in which which font did you write the text when you were when when the bot was running because this is the workflow that will be created. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy the text. You know, you, you have that option here and you simply go to that element where uh, that text is present, which is going to be here. You clicked it and all done right away. So um, it's, it's added to the workflow. The corresponding activity has been added to the workflow. And now if you want to continue with the recording session, you can do that. You know, you still want to type more, say, <laughs> and uh, enter and yes there it is right and now you want to end the session you want to save and exit the workflow so you see a corresponding uh, recording sequence has been generated I'm gonna name it as manual recording sample okay and uh, first and foremost I'm gonna connect it to the start uh, node here so I can just right click and set a start node that way it automatically connects and here are the underlying activities right so um, if we go down them we, we see that you know the first and the foremost activity was that you were typing into uh, into the word area that says I love pro rpa.com then you got this editable text font uh, that you know whatever the text is present in this in this element the calibri body you got that text right and you see there's an output uh, variable let me expand this a little bit. So you see there's an output variable called editable text font. You can check in the variables also. We have um, editable text font in here, which is a generic value because that's the one that has automatically been created by the system. It doesn't know what data it is getting. So always it is going to take the generic value. And uh, you got that data and uh, you still did the typing that you know. I mean, you, you did the further recording session. So if you want to check whether the data that we got, like the get text, uh, this get text activity is working fine or not, guess what you can do? Yes, uh, you can simply print that output, right? So let's write 
use the right line method here and uh, this is called editable so here it is right and uh, okay let's check this quick workflow I'm gonna delete everything because I want to get it to the um, precise conditions as we started the recording with so that's how our data was or that's how our overall arrangement was so let's run this again and see if it works fine or not so I love ProRPA.com I still do and works fine let's check the output panel uh, sorry mm. okay and it did show that the Calibri body is there right so that means let me actually just yeah I mean it's alright I have this recording session so yeah that's the overall output panel and it says that Calibri body is there it means the data was read perfectly right so similarly you can add a lot of other elements that are a lot of other activities that you would want by simply using those manual activities that are provided alongside there's other way that you know instead of this is like you know once you're in the middle of the recording session you can pause the recording session add the activities and continue with it the other way is that you know let like create the workflow that you can based on the limitations of the recording and then uh, once you have the workflow for that then add the activities in the UiPath studio itself right that way you know like this right line activity say you wanted to print the output in a message box you could have add a message box activity here and so on so two ways simple ways manual recording is pretty easy once you understand the concept of the recording manual recording is um, you know pretty straightforward all right um, next next we're gonna talk about web recording okay guys so web recording is actually like very frequently used feature of UiPath Studio first and foremost because of the fundamental uh, principle behind the recording is that you know you get a skeleton uh, workflow in your for your program for your business logic that you're trying to implement so of course recording in itself is of is pretty useful however most of the um, you know um, products that we use enterprise applications that we use are all web-based right in my first and foremost like the first very first uh, blog post itself I showed you a demo for a part creation process right and uh, that was again a web application too so um, starting off with a web recording would definitely be a very very um, legible or a good way to start off uh, with the uh, with the bot creation process okay so um, having said that let's have uh, I'm gonna close this yeah I don't want to save it um, I'm gonna use the same um, um, you know uh, example that we use in the part creation process and uh, I'm sure with all the Excel activities and stuff that we have talked about you can probably create the whole thing by yourself I'm just gonna give you a quick example of web recording okay so let me copy the user ID all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the web recording I'm gonna tell you how to even um, you know uh, manipulate the program change the program probably change a few selectors if it is needed and uh, make the program I don't know standalone independent as well I'm gonna give you a few uh, you know suggestions on that as well on that front okay so we still have the manual activities for the web recording as well right you cannot open the browser uh, in the recording session so you have that uh, as a manual activity and all that other stuff you can do so let's first say that you have this uh, document open right this um, this QuakeBooks application open or this home page is open and um, you want to enter your credentials and everything and you wanna record that session so I just clicked on recording here is the user ID that I'm gonna add enter right this is the user ID I'm gonna empty the field again I don't have to mention this everybody knows why empty field is used because if there was any other value it would have take wiped that out and then it would have written this user ID which is what we want for the password because you know password is supposed to be confidential you've got to use type password and you gotta empty the field again so that way um, 
even in the middle of a recording session, nobody gets to know and your password is always safe and secure, right? And then you simply click on this sign in. It's all been recorded, right? And um, and you see uh, what's going on is okay. Um, so it seems like my trial uh, version for this software has expired. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this, right? And uh, we we just successfully locked in, right? Um, so um, let's let's end the recording session here because that's all I want to do. Okay, so here it is. I just hit escape and I got that again. I'm going to save and exit so that I get my recording sequence. Here it is. Uh, I'm going to connect it to the start node. Okay, and there seems to be some issue right with the recording session. First and foremost, I'm going to get back to the original position where I was to, you know, when I'm going to re-execute, I want to see whether it's working fine or not. And let's open the recording sequence and see what's the issue, right? Um, in the recording sequence, because everything is in one attached browser window itself with the container. So, and here are the activities underlying. So these, this password is somewhat um, causing an issue. Let's see what it says. So it says that the value for a required activity argument text was not supplied. So let me, um, you know, these are the things that you're going to uh, understand when you play around with the tool. But what happens is to input a password, you first use this uh, activity called get password, right? And get password is where you write down the password with, the, I mean, it's going to show as the asterisk sign because it's encrypted. And uh, here is your password, right? Whatever it is, ABC, XYZ, whatever. And you got to store that password the, that, that has been provided by you in a resultant variable. That makes sense. So we're going to create a new variable, right? I'm going to create variable as pass. Okay. I created the variable. Now that variable needs to be passed. It has got that encrypted value, right? So now I'm going to pass that variable in this text as an input. Either you can put it here or you can put it here as well. Pass, right? Once you click outside, the errors are gone. So that's how the password activity is used. Uh, another, you know, uh, additional information within this recording session. And um, you see that your program at least looks error free. Not sure if it's going to run or not. So what we're going to do is we saved the program. And uh, here we are. We're going to run this as well. Okay. And see if it works fine or not. Or if there might be issues, we might need to make a few changes. So it entered the user ID, the password, it signed in. And okay, so um, well, the login was successful. However, there was something that was not done. Guess what? In our last recording session, once we entered the user ID and the password and we clicked on the sign in, we are supposed to, this is a part of the recording session itself, right? Or this is a part of the activities or the workflow that you know you have to click on this close button as well, which is right here. It didn't do that. What could be the reason? Um, two, whether, um, you know, this activity was, you know, in as per the robot, it, it worked, but in actual, it didn't, right? Why? There could be possible reasons that the selectors, which we did talk about in our last week uh, post, um, the selectors were not chosen carefully, right? Or, I mean, it was uh, by selectors, we mean like, you know, the, the this element, this cross uh, UI element was not, I was not identified correctly by the program. So what are we going to do, right? Two things we can do. First, we can play around with the selectors right here, right? It says close and submit. You got to choose uh, one, two, none, both, whatever. You got to try that out and attach it to a live element as well. You can do that so that, you know, uh, it is always. Okay. So UI element is no longer valid. There's something, some issue with this. Okay. Let's try to use this. Okay. So it's taking the full one, but, um, it's not, uh, selector is valid. Shh, right. Um, if you want to run and try that out again, you can try that. 
I'm going to give you another option, which is going to work um, even better. And that is something which covers a bit of your um, Citrix VPN as well, but we'll focus on that in a minute. Okay, let's run this program again and see if it works. So you got the user ID, the password, and see, you got to play around with the two, with the workflow, right? If, if something doesn't work, you have got to make it work to make it more robust. So still, the crossbar, it didn't even wait for it. It's going on and it's just, you know, uh, it's ending the workflow, but it is supposed to click this. So what are we going to do? Take out this activity because somehow this element is not being um, identified properly by, you know, by the program, by the workflow. What we're going to do is the sign in part is all good. Instead of clicking on an element, we're going to click an image. Okay. And in here we indicate the element. We, we indicate which, uh, you know, image you want to click. So this is the image that I want to click. Okay. Right. We're always going to um, like name the activities um, suitably that, you know, uh, close the subscription, whatever it is, you can name it as you want. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run this program again and see if, uh, if it works this time. Just, um, you know, just playing around. And you got to work. You, you, so as, as we've already mentioned again and again that, you know, um, this is not always going to be like precisely correct, but it's just a skeleton and you can play around and just make a few changes and it should be all good. So it logged in successfully and uh, it's waiting. It's still waiting. It's got the subscription model, uh, this area. It clicked on the close button and perfect. It's not going to wait because there's that, that those are the only activities that have been mentioned. And here it is. We have successfully logged into our uh, QuickBooks tool. So, um, you know, this is uh, basically web recording. You created the skeleton, you played around with it, and uh, you make the robot work. You only had to add just one activity. That's it. You know, in the previous manual recording as well, you just got the get text option. And, and most of the part is done by the recording itself. So um, you cannot rely completely, but of course, in terms of getting a skeleton uh, for your workflow, it's one of the best things that can happen. Perfect. Um, this is it for this week. Um, uh, another quick overview on Citrix uh, VPN because I might not be able to access a VPN machine is that you know, uh, you use these sort of uh, image uh, you know, automations in Citrix machines to uh, make your program work. Most of the times you scrape the image, you click on the image, double click on the image. I mean, because it has been treated as an image, you cannot just go and put stuff directly. You can, you can um, access the UI elements of, of the machine, of the local machine where the UI path or your RPA tool is running, right? For Citrix machines, it, it is, heavily, heavily dependent on uh, image automations. And um, this was one quick example. And you got to check out that, you know, uh, one possible reason could have been that, you know, this, uh, the, when we got that subscription uh, screen in our uh, QuickBooks Intuit tool, then uh, that, you know, that tool is not, or that screen is not interactive with the external applications. There, its UI elements are not interactive. There could be like, I don't know, a number of reasons why that element was not identified. But to make it work, instead of clicking on the element, you clicked on the image and you took the precise image of the sign where you want to click. That way, um, it is gonna wait for that image to appear. It is gonna click on that and then um, you should be all set to go, right? So uh, there are like always a lot of activities you gotta play around with and uh, properties that you gotta see and um, and uh, make it as robust as possible. I've been mentioning this since day one, that you know, um, you gotta make your bot as reliable as possible. All right, um, this is it for this week. Thank you very much. Please do comment, subscribe, like, and share the posts and the demo videos that I post every week. And uh, happy automating. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.